Ever wondered how to analyze indeterminate trusses? Trusses are pin-jointed structures where load is applied at joints. Triangulation is used to support long spans and members can only support tension and compression. But wait a minute, we cannot analyze indeterminate trusses using ordinary equilibrium equations. We use special methods to analyze these trusses. These special methods include stiffness or displacement method and force or flexibility method. In today's tutorial, I will talk about force or flexibility method for indeterminate trusses and I will solve one example. This is the second example in this series. For theoretical background and other example, click on this side of the screen to watch it. Hey friends, if you're new here, I am Dr. Javed Qureshi, a senior lecturer at a London University. On this channel, we explore technical and human skills to help us lead more productive, happy and examine life. When static indeterminacy of a structure is more than zero, then we cannot use ordinary methods to work out their member forces. We need some specialized methods. And flexibility or force method, stiffness or displacement method, these are two methods to solve these structures. And in today's tutorial, I will solve indeterminate truss using flexibility or force method. This is the question, uh, the pin jointed frame shown in figure is pinned at support A and supported on roller at support D for all members L over AE is given. The frame carries a single point load of 60 kN at E. During construction, it was found that the member CF was made too short by 3 mm was forced into position. First, we have to calculate the member forces in CF and CE. If the member CF had an imperfection of lambda mm instead of being too short by 3 mm, calculate lambda so that the force in the member is zero. This is the structure that we need to solve. It is supported on two supports. The length of each individual member is L. It is important to note that the angle between members is 45 all the time, which makes our life very easy in terms of finding a cos and sine theta because cos and sine theta 45 is going to be the same. But let us see how we can solve this structure. Now, I will give you five steps to solve this structure. Step one is to find out static indeterminacy to see that a force method is needed or not. Otherwise, we can use simply equilibrium equations to solve this structure. The formula for finding out static indeterminacy is for pin jointed structures is m plus r minus 2j. This is the formula for finding out static indeterminacy, where m is number of members, r is number of reactions, and j is number of joints. First, let's count the number of members. So you will count these members as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So there are 10 members and number of reactions as we have a pin support at left. So we, it has two reactions, vertical and horizontal. A roller support at D, which got one reaction. It means number of reactions are three. Number of joints. Joints, you can see A, B, C, D, E, and F. There are six joints. Note that these crosses, they are not connected to each other. They pass over each other. So that's why we will not consider that as a joint. So using 10 plus 3 minus 2 times 6, it is giving me SI is 1. Now what information is it telling me? The first step for force and flexibility method is to find out static indeterminacy, then remove a member or a joint to make a structure statically determinate. Then follow the compatibility equations to find out displacements and forces. So here, this is the actual indeterminate truss which is given to us and we will form a real system by removing a member. The key here is to remove a member for which you are asked to find out forces. If I go back to the question, it says calculate member forces in CF and CE. So I will remove this member CF. So removing this member means that member force in this member is zero. Now you have to remove a member in such a way so that the structure is stable and statically determinate. Now I cannot remove a member CD because in that case the structure will be unstable. Although it's going to be statically determinate. So you have to remove member 
for support as i mentioned in such a way uh, that it is statically determinate and stable here we have removed this member cf for which we have to find out the force as well so this is our real system we will form a virtual system as well and i will talk about it in a while so step three is to use method of joints to find out member forces in real system when we use method of joints the first thing we want to do is to find out reactions and i'm saying summation of moments at a is equal to zero when you have summation of moment at a is equal to zero in the real system not the actual which is given to us the reactions here are v a and h a and here i have reaction vertical reaction v d now here v d is creating anti-clockwise moment with respect to a and the distance perpendicular distance between this vertical force and point a is l l and l 3 l and this 60 kN is creating clockwise moment and the distance will be 2 l simply i will write these two things down vd into 3 l anti-clockwise 60 into 2 l from here we work out reactions 40 kN and because the total load applied is 60 so va will be 20 kN. the next step which i want to do is to specify arrows and what do these arrows tell me if arrows are pointing outwards if you have a joint and if arrows are pointing outwards it is telling me that it is tension so assume tension in all members so where you can see these arrows they are pointing away from the joints and when we will get values of member forces if they are negative then we will say it is compression so let's find out member forces the first joint which i want to start is joint d and the reason is that this joint has got at least one member force known as all angles are 45 so sine theta is equal to cos theta is equal to 1 over under root 2 or 0 0.707 at joint d i will sum up all vertical forces if you have a look at joint d it's got two vertical forces forces one is the reaction which is upwards another is vertical component of this member cd so fcd 1 over uh, under root 2 is equal to minus 40 because they are in the same direction so that's why i've added them up and i brought this 40 on the other side of the equation 40 was the reaction and from here uh, i get fcd as minus 40 under root 2 which means that this member is in compression and then i will say summation of horizontal forces equal to zero and when you say summation of horizontal forces equal to zero then at joint d you will see i have one horizontal force which is ed or de and horizontal component of cd so fcd into 1 over 2 this is the horizontal component plus fde uh, from here i have value of fcd which i found out here if you simply put this value you will get fde as 40 kN. this means that fde is in tension because the sign did not change once i'm done with joint d then i will go to joint c at joint c you will see that i have summation of vertical force i have this vertical force fce which is unknown now i have found these two forces so summation of vertical components will be fce plus fcd 1 over under root 2 fce is this uh, vertical force and fcd into 1 over under root 2 is vertical component of uh, cd because they are acting in the same direction so that's why i have added them up so when you add them up if you put value of fcd you will get fce as 40 kN. In the same way, uh, summation of horizontal forces, FBC is equal to FCD 1 over under root 2. Horizontal forces are BC, which is this horizontal force, and horizontal component of CD, which is acting in opposite direction. It means I will simply equate them. And that's the reason FBC is equal to FCD into 1 over under root 2. FCD, I have just found out, 40 under root 2. If you put this value, you will get minus 40 kN. And slowly, I will move to joint E. At joint E, first vertical forces. Now, how many vertical forces are there? Firstly, we have this applied vertical load, and then you have this upward load, FCE, and then you have component of vertical component of BE. So FCE plus vertical component of BE is equal to 60. These two forces are acting in the same direction upward, and the 60 kN is acting downward. So that's why it is on the other side of the e equation. Or you could say that 
FCE plus FB, one over under root two minus 60 is equal to zero. It's one and the same thing. Putting value of FCE, I will get value of FBE. And in the same way, I will sum up the horizontal forces at joint E. If I come to joint E, I have FEF and I have horizontal component of BE and then I have FED. So F EF and FBE into 1 over under root 2 is equal to FDE. These two are acting in the same direction and this is acting in the opposite direction. So that's why I've equated them this way. When you put values of FBE and FDE, you will get FEF as 20 kN. Once you've got all these values, you will put them here. Then I will move to the joint F. At joint F, it's interesting to see that at joint F, I have only one vertical force connected, which is BF. When you are in this situation in trusses where only one vertical element is connected, the force in that member is always going to be zero. And this is one of the interview questions as well for graduate engineers. And this is a basic concept in understanding a structural behavior as well. The vertical forces F, BF is zero. And then I will sum up the horizontal forces. There's no other horizontal force. So this force AF is going to be equal to EF. So that's why you can directly write this as well. So F BF is zero and F AF is 20 kN. Then I move to joint B. At joint B, let's see what the situation is at joint B. At joint B, I have vertical forces BF, which is zero, vertical component of uh, BE and vertical component of BA. So F, B, F, vertical component of B, vertical component of uh, B, A, uh, B, E, we found out earlier, B, F is zero. From here, we work out B, A as minus 20 under root two. Now, once we've got all these forces, we will write them in real system. So here you write all the e forces. And later I will tell you why it is very useful. Then I will move to the virtual system. In virtual system, we apply load in the member which member we removed earlier so we removed cf we will apply unit load over there and there will be no load in a b a f so these loads are going to be zero the reason is that no external load is applied it would only have internal forces and by symmetry if one is applied over here this force here is going to be e1 and if you are in exam situation, then simply you will isolate joint C and work out only one force and leave the others because it is symmetric. The force in others is going to be the same in any way. But here I have solved all the forces. So step four is forces in virtual system P1, E1. Now forces in members D, C, D, E, A, B and A, F are zero because no external forces are applied. At joint C, I will sum up all vertical forces first. So let's see what vertical forces are there at joint C. At joint C, I have FCE and I have vertical component of uh, CF. There's no force over here in CD. So FCE plus vertical component of FCF. I put value of FCF and from here you get value of FCE as minus one over under root two. The same way if you sum up the horizontal forces, you will have horizontal forces as so you have horizontal force F, B, C or C, B, and then you have horizontal component of F, C, F. And simply we add them together. So here I've added F, B, C plus horizontal component of C, F, and F, B, C is minus one over under root two as well. Now by symmetry, you can see forces in all members will be minus one over under root two. Or if you prefer, you can uh, use method of joints at joint B, and you will work out F, C, E, which is this inclined member. And you will say summation of vertical forces equal to zero. From there, you can work out FBF, which is minus one over under root two. And by symmetry, we will say that FEF is minus one over under root two as well. If you want to expedite the solution, you can simply find the values of forces at one joint and say that by symmetry, we get these forces. But step five is to put all these forces from real and virtual system in a table. So we would use this table to place all the forces. So whatever members are there, you will put all the forces over here. So you will take the virtual system, which is this one, and real system, which is this one, and you will copy all these forces in this table. When we copy all these forces, then we have to add these forces P0. We multiply P0, P1, and here P1, P1, it means that we multiply two times. So one over under root two times one over under root two will give you half. 
And then we sum up all these forces over here and we sum up this as well. Note that here 2 under root 2 can be written by multiplying both sides by under root 2 and under root 2. When we multiply 2 under root 2s, then it becomes 2 power 1. This is equal to 40 under root 2. So, so 20 under root 2 can be written as 40 over under root 2. So 40 over under root 2 will get cancelled with this one. And I have 40 under divided by under root 2. Take away minus 20 divided by under root 2. It will be left with 20 divided by under root 2. And in the same way, you will simply add up all these forces over here and you get 4. The next step is compatibility equations. Now for compatibility, D10, which is displacement, should be equal to redundant R1 times F11, which is flexibility coefficient. Here, the redundant in our case is PCF, force in CF. This is the member that we removed. I replace R1 as PCF and D10 is equal to summation of P1, P0, L over A plus lambda. This is another equation. Remember that uh, this is the equation just for when we have only one redundant. If we have two redundant, then certainly equations, equation one is going to be different. And for this, please have a look at the theoretical lecture. You can find the link uh, somewhere in the description. L over A is given lambda is 0.3 because the member is too short. If the member was too long, then it will be 3 millimeter. Summation of P0, P1 from the table, it is 20 under root 2. If you put all these values over here, uh, then you get value of D1 as minus 2.29. Once you have got value of D1, then you find out F11, the summation of P1, P1, L over A, this is flexibility coefficient. Summation of P1, P1 is 4 from the table. L over A is given. We get F11 as 0.2. Now, we put all these values in equation 1. From here, PCF, remember this formula for PCF, it becomes 11.46 kN, which means that it is in tension. A force in member, in any other member, would be equal to the force in that member in a real system plus redundant. So PCF will remain constant even if you want to find force in any other member and P1 in that particular member. So when you put all these values here, you can get these two values from table. PCE comes out to be 31.89 kN. Both forces are in tension. Now part B says if the member CF has imperfection of lambda, instead of being too short, calculate lambda so that the force in the member is zero. Now for this, we will find out first of all formula for force in the member. Formula for force in the member is this one. And D10, we are putting summation of P0, P1L over AE plus uh, lambda. So lambda, we are not putting any value. Previously, we placed value of minus three over here. So here we are not putting any value, we are using this formula. So instead of minus three, we are saying plus lambda. So this will give us, if you simplify this 20 into five, will give you 100, 100 into 10 raised minus two will be one. So that's why we have one over under root two plus lambda. This is value of D10. As PCF is equal to minus D10 over F11, uh, simply we will put value of these two. So this is PCF. So here we will simply put value of D10, the revised value of D10, which is 1 over under 2 plus lambda over 0.2 is F11. It remains the same. The force is equal to 0 as the question says. And from here we work out value of lambda as minus 1 over under root 2. So this is how we solve indeterminate trust using force method. And you can use this formula to work out member forces in all the members of a truss.